Okay, I've got a problem. I'm a little bit obsessed with limestone. And I'm also a little bit obsessed with steak at the moment. So today, I'm bringing you both. Welcome to Scout Scar. Now I've mentioned Scout Scar quite a few times on previous videos, like up on Falton Knot, and last week in the Yorkshire Dales on Malham Cove. So it kind of made sense to, to finally bring you here and show you, if you've not been here before. And if you're not too sure where Scout Scar is, I'll show you some of the outstanding views from atop, and that should help you get your bearings if you're familiar with the Lake District. Let's go and have a look. I mean, literally 15 seconds from the car park, where I'd normally park, you get that view. <laughs> that is absolutely glorious, isn't it? Especially with this white raiment, all that beautiful snow. And the summit is just here. Honestly, it's such a quick walk. So what I'm going to do today is basically walk right along Scout Scar as far as I can go and I kind of have a wander back, maybe down to the old Kendall race course. I don't know. See how we, how we get on. And then circle back round, head back to the van and then we're going to have a steak dinner. I'm very, very excited about that. <laughs> and then tomorrow morning, uh, I think I'm going to head off and find somewhere to have a nice cooked breakfast as well because I've not had one of those for a while very excited but look at this place look at it got to be really really careful here because obviously as you can see massive drop over there is the lake district this is all the lake district to be honest with you this is the Lithe valley here and you can pretty much see right from the furnace fells right up to Bowfell, langdale pikes central fells red screes all of the kentmere horseshoe here it's stunning and it looks extra stunning with this snow. It's beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up to the mushroom, what they call the mushroom, you'll see what that is in a minute, and then carry on around and get back to this point maybe when it gets to sunset and we'll just have a look at this glorious view because the light should be pretty good reflecting off these snowy mountains. So let's go and have a look. It is so bright, I can't see a flipping thing. But I can see the mushroom just there, look. Here we go, the mushroom. So the idea behind this is you're supposed to stand up here, behind this central rod here and then look at this little chart here to line it up with the various features the different fells I mean it goes right round I mean the view is stunning in every direction not just the Lake District but right out towards the east as well the Howe Gills way down into North Yorkshire oh, I must admit it's a little bit of a hazy day today so I can't quite see that much out towards the east but certainly the Lake District you can kind of see why this is such a popular place to come and sit, you know, uh, at sunset or any time really, to be honest with you. Because you've obviously got these different four quadrants where you can hopefully escape the wind and have your butties. But this isn't actually the summit. The summit is over that way, the highest point. This isn't quite it. So let's continue down. I think what I'm going to do is drop down to the edge here because um, you get the best views from there and head all the way down till, you know, there's nothing else to do. Whew, that was a red hot. <laughs> I've kind of come in all my gear. It looks totally over the top, I know it does. Massive bag for like a, perhaps a two mile walk. But I just wanted to feel like I was back out in the fells again. I really miss being up there. It's killing me right now not being up there in the snow. But it is what it is. 
So I thought I'd recreate it here with all my gear. And still no idea. <laughs> I know for a fact it is going to be very, very cold tonight. Around about minus two, I think it's going to drop down to. A little bit worried about getting off the parking spot tonight. And you'll see that later on when I get back to the van. I don't know what it's going to be like in the morning. It could be an absolute nightmare. Anyway, isn't it lovely? Scout Scar. Another one of these places with amazing trees. It's, once again, Carboniferous Limestone. Exactly the same as Whitbarrow Scout, which is across the valley there. Like I said before, this is the Lithe Valley. Look how wide it is. I mean, it must have been amazing watching the, uh, the glacier come down here. Really shallow, wide one. Amazing. So that's, yeah, Whitbarrow Scar. Beyond that is Hampsfell. All limestone pavements. Look at it. Absolutely flipping gorgeous. It is somewhere you could spend hours as a photographer, certainly getting pictures of these trees in, in different kind of weather conditions on misty days. It's a little bit like a, a rubbish fanal. <laughs> Sounds awful that, doesn't it? But you know, like a mini fanal. Anyway, let's get on and stop yip yapping and uh, just show you the views. Oh God, I need to be careful around here because it's really slushy snow and it's just shelving away from the, um, the ground. I don't want to be sliding down that now, do I? <laughs> so this snow is the remnants of what hit us um, just a few days ago. When was that? What day are we on? I've completely lost track, honestly. It's about three or four days ago that um, Lake District got absolutely hammered by snow. I mean, Windermere and Ambleside, it was crazy. Really, really crazy. And I mentioned this on Patreon. There was like footage of people walking from Ambleside to Windermere. And it was like a weird apocalyptic procession. All the cars abandoned by the side of the road. Even the snow plows were struggling. Just, you know, spinning the wheels. Couldn't get anywhere. This is the other way you can come up, by the way. <laughs> it's not, I'm joking. <laughs> that would be crazy. No, the other, way, but the other way you can come up is a bit further down there. Just have visions of me standing on a bit of this snow and it just slides away from the grass because it is like slush now. And then I just end up, you know, falling down that. So once again, this is one of those places that's in the Lake District, but it's quite often overlooked by a lot of people because they are up in the big fells enjoying those wonderful walks but it's definitely somewhere worth coming i mean even wainwright talks about this and has a chapter dedicated to it in his outlying fells book i believe i don't actually know i've not read it <laughs> but i think he he does mention scout scar as well as a few other places in south lakes yeah and like i said it is the lake district it has the lake district feel has that vibe but it's not rammed full of people it's lovely hope you're enjoying it I don't know about you, but I'm already at 20 to 2 looking forward to my steak. <laughs> Hours yet. See what I mean about the trees though? They're everywhere, like this weird kind of dead forest. It's really cool. In fact, let's go and walk amongst them and see what it looks like up here. I'd kind of guess Similar to Falton, I'd guess that they are ash and that they're dead. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I love this one over here. Look at this. That's well and truly bent over. That must have a saw back. So you can kind of tell which direction the wind normally blows, can't you? Okay, I think what I'm going to do, rather than carrying all the way along, because it is pretty much the same <laughs> for about another half mile, uh, not even that, to be honest with you, what I'm going to do is cut the corner off and head towards the wall. So there's a wall somewhere out there, if you had good eyes you'd be able to see it, and then I'm going to handrail that wall along and somehow find the race course.
Okay, I didn't quite get to the wall. So the wall's over that direction there. And it comes to a corner. So I've done the full route, not been so lazy. I would have hit that wall and then hand railed it along, but I've kind of cut the corner off. Doesn't matter. God, there's trees everywhere. It's amazing. So I'm kind of on a path here, but it's not the one I want to be on. I think where I need to be is a bit further over. Over here. And the direction I'm heading is, well, basically towards Kendall. The last time I was here doing this bit, I mean, I've been up uh, Scout Scar many times since, just around this section. But the last time I went over to the race course was on a, a running event called That's Live. It was a flipping brutal 26 miler that kind of goes over Whitbarrow Scar and Scout Scar. And yeah, I remember twisting my ankle halfway around. It's <laughs> flipping hell. A bit of a clumsy off. Think I can see my path. Think I'm, I'm just very aware of this damn shadow. <laughs> you know how obsessed I am. I think I can see my path here. And unfortunately, yes, I do lose a bit of height here and have to gain it back. But it's not too, it's not too bad. And by the way, after, it has to be said, touch wood, my toe is feeling all right. It's swollen up to hell and it's obviously still not right. But I'm able to do walks like this with absolutely no problem at all. And I don't mind risking it on these kind of walks because if I suddenly do hurt it and it's excruciatingly painful, I can kind of limp, you know, a mile that way and I'm back in the van. Probably could get up and do a big fell walk, but if I hurt myself, I could end up just being stuck up there. So it's a bit risky, especially this time of year with all the snow and ice. I don't really want to take that chance. So I'm going to stick to these small walks, like I said last time in the Yorkshire Dales video and enjoy it. You know, I love this sort of stuff. It just takes you away from the crowds as well. You get to, you know, Get to have a little bit of time away from other people. I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know why you guys tolerate this waffle. It is absolute garbage. Okay, I'm completely lost. <laughs> the path is around here somewhere, but it doesn't matter. Just enjoying being off the path, to be honest with you, and seeing these little bits that you don't normally see. Oh, this is nice. So in a minute, I should hit a wall and then I'll head east. So it's two o'clock, just after two o'clock, which means at this time of year, we're in golden hour. This time of year, we kind of have two hours of golden hour, which is great. You know, soft light for a long time, but I'm a little bit concerned that I might not be able to get back up to the top for sunset, actual sunset, you know. Some clouds gathering out to the west, so there might not be any sunset anyway. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, here's the wall. Ah, I think I can see a little bit of a sort of a path here. That's not a bad view, is it? Not bad at all. It's lovely. <laughs> I know I say this all the time. I think on just about every single video, I kind of go, oh, it's so lovely, isn't it? But it flipping is. So this is Kendall here. And weirdly enough, I'm getting kind of smells of wood smoke and, and stuff like that. I can definitely hear the, whoop, the dual carriageway there. Oh, it, it's a combination of the light, this really beautiful soft light, the snow, the incredible views that very subtle smell of wood smoke kind of sends you a little bit doolally, doesn't it? It does me anyway. <laughs> okay, finally got to the path. So this is the path I should have been on before. <laughs> what I was looking for. Okay, a little bit. A little bit worrying how that, there isn't a fat man gate next to it. Oh, my camera. It's just too much gubbins hanging off me. <laughs> Thank goodness 
it's all a bit frozen at the moment because that bit would have been a nightmare oh no this one's even more narrow so I think I'm going to have to take my camera off uh, let's put you there a minute <laughs> keep going <laughs> put that up there might be able to get through now I don't know actually, I think I'm going to have to take my whole bag off Let's have a... mm. Oh come on oh, just, I can get a bit further I can do it Oh no, I can imagine if I got wedged <laughs> Oh hell, I think I have oh, God I mean, <laughs> in this day and age That surely must be against the law Because there are a lot of Larger people around You've got to accommodate them Put me down there again Okay. Whew. I don't know if I'm going to hear me anymore after all that debacle. Oh no, another one. <laughs> it's all right. This one's kind of open, but this is it. This is this is the old Kendall race course, horse racing. And like I said earlier, I have absolutely no idea when it was decommissioned or why or anything. It's not done research whatsoever, as usual. We've got a few swale dales here, look. I drove through your valley last week and it was beautiful. I bet you wish you were there. So what I need to do is head off to the northeast corner of the race course and then swing back round, I think through a farm, and then back up towards the top of Scout Scar. It's half two, so it'll probably take me about another half an hour to get up there. And then that's it, I should be there for the... Whew, it's probably about 50 minutes, actually of the final golden hour and then sunset that's quite interesting <laughs> i think the farmer must have just come out because they're all on the move go on girl go get your dindins that's it to be honest with you i think i'm about ready for my uh, dindins as well uh, let's have a think I think I go this way. Oh, I think it's a false alarm. How awful. So the farm must have been milling around the farm there. And <laughs> they all started charging over and buying, but they've stopped now. Crest fallen. Okay, so the permitted right away takes you right across the race course. What I could have done, maybe, maybe, is just cut out all of this <laughs> and headed towards the farm because the path that I'll be on in a minute is um, back within this wall here so I think what I'm going to do is rather than go through the wall onto the road and back out onto here I'm just going to kind of walk down here it just makes sense to me but the question is am I going to get shot by the farmer and as you can see I would have come back through this gate back out onto the race course again anyway so pretty pointless really this really all right heading for the corner of the field little gate there look okay so in theory I could just walk right down there, just along here, along this wall, <laughs> from that other gate, and not bothered with this. Oh no! I have to take my camera off again. Wait there. Can I get through now? Nope. I have to take my bag off. Okay, that was a complete and utter faff. <laughs> I have to take my bag off, camera off, almost all my clothes off to get through that gate. I don't know who they're trying to keep out weird isn't it but I think uh, about 10 minutes to get up to back up to the mushroom but there's something I want to have a look at first on the map there is a, a triangulation point up there now I don't remember seeing an actual trig point like a pillar I don't I don't remember seeing one of those so maybe it's a stud in the ground I don't know I'll go and have a look see what it is
All right, finally at the wall and the gate. So we're now back up onto that main ridge and the mushroom is just there, look. But I'm gonna go this way and try and find that trig point. But the question is, how am I gonna get through this gate <laughs> without having to take my bag off? It's just, there's just no way to do it. There's no way of getting through. Right, I can't do it. Bag off again. I had to de-kit again just to get through the flipping gate. <laughs> And I think it's somewhere, I don't know, I think it might be the Lake District National Park website or one of their books, cites this particular route as um, Miles Without Styles, that's what they call it. Miles Without Styles, because it's inclusive, anybody can do it. Um, you don't have to worry about styles, but it's not inclusive. What about people with massive bags or really deep, wide people? Look at the light over there now. Wow, so Kendall has kind of been plunged into darkness now. Not darkness, but shadow, you know. Um, it's behind this hill. And unfortunately, I kind of thought this might happen. The uh, sun has gone behind cloud, but it is making the mountains look amazing. Look at the mushroom now. That is absolutely glorious, isn't it? The light. Okay, let's make haste to the next wall. And behind that wall should be the trig point, whatever it is. And then let's get back to the mushroom and look down at that glorious view. Okay, what is it? Let's have a look. In all the years I've been up here, I've never even noticed that there was a trig point here. Never noticed. <laughs> I'm always down. At the edge, you see, kind of marvelling at that view. However, it's worth noting that that isn't the highest point. The highest point is back there where I mentioned before. Now the sun has gone in, temperature has dropped significantly. It's pretty cold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down to the edge again, back towards the mushroom, and then actually probably back towards that bit where they emerged right at the beginning of the video, and to see if any drama happens on the fells. It's kind of happening right now. Uh, so I need to get back there quick. <laughs> Let's go. I don't know if it's coming out on this camera, but it's looking amazing up in the fells. So this here is the Kentmere Horseshoe. Ill Bell is looking amazing. And you can see right round to High Street, right over to Harterfell as well. And along that Eastern Ridge, incredible light, but blue sky above it. And it's looking nice out towards the Southwest, not quite West because see, it's winter. It's setting a bit further south. Lovely. You can see Arnside Knot. Just beside Arnside Knot, you can see Heesham Power Station. Beautiful. That sun could drop down below the cloud, you know, and just have this, you know, split second, like literally 30 seconds of a moment of beautiful light coming down the valley. You never know. So that just kind of goes to prove just how much heat is in that winter sun. As I was walking down that way, I mean, I was overheating, so I took my coat off. It was absolutely red hot. But now, whew, I can kind of feel my face getting very, very cold. Arms are getting cold, hands are freezing. Looking forward to getting cosy in the van. Have I told you how much I love these trees? Am I boring you to death? <laughs> Okay, here we are back at the mushroom and this microphone is about to die so um, I might have to, to switch to the internal audio on this thing, it's rubbish. I think I'm just going to head back to the van anyway so I'll see you back there and we'll use the other mic. See you in a minute. Okay, not sure if you can hear me because obviously this mic's rubbish. <laughs> But this is the highest point of Scout Scar. So I'll spin you back around again. Oh wow. <laughs> There's the mushroom. There's the incredible sunset. And obviously all the late district. I don't think there's gonna be light on there now. So I think the sun. I don't know. It still could happen. I don't know. It still could happen. Because look, look, let me spin you back around again. 
sun is going to drop below that cloud. There's going to be a little gap there, and it might just slice across. I think it's worth just standing down here for a little bit, you know, a few minutes. Okay, I managed to warm up the microphone. It's actually not the mic that's the problem, it's the receiver, because it's out on the end of this pole. It gets really cold. So stick it in a pocket for about 10 minutes. Has warmed it up enough, hopefully, so I can talk to you a little bit longer. Look, the light is, as I said, very, very soft, mind you, but it is slicing underneath here. See the top of these trees here lit up. Top of the trees there of, on that. Um, Scar. I'm not going to say what the word is because I'll we'll explain something a little bit later on in the van when I'm making steak. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of it. Um, so yes, it, well, as I'm saying that, the light seems to be going. So, oh look at it, can you see it there? Oh man, actually I'm in the wrong place. I should be looking down at the valley. Damn it. <laughs> Do I go back up? I don't think so. I don't think it's, I don't think there's any features on the ground that are going to be lit up with that. It's a bit too soft. I think I'm going to head back to the van. I am going to get that steak on because I'm not kidding you. I'm like Marvin. I've not eaten today. So I'm going to have a steak. Not steak dinner. Steak breakfast. <laughs> Let's go. Eek. It's starting to get a little bit frozen, this stuff. It's funny I don't remember this at all on the wheel. Was it snowy? <laughs> oh, weird. van has slipped a bit. This wheel was on the top of that rock there and I was thinking maybe I should put it in that little dip and it's moved there by itself. As you can see it's slipped back a little bit on the ice and there's a big drop there. Am I going to slide off into oblivion? Okay I think I've had a slight change of heart and change of plan. I'm not going to stay here tonight <laughs> because two reasons. One it's really busy this is like a dog walking um, path, dog walking, by the way. And there's a lot of people here dog walking. And I just noticed I put my clutch in. So in effect, took the uh, the van out of gear and it slipped back a little bit. So <laughs> I think I probably will end up in that fence in the morning. So I'm going to try and find somewhere else now and I head off. I know somewhere where I could go. It might be a little bit on a weird angle, but it might be fine. And I drove past it on the way here and there was no snow and ice at all. So we'll give that a go. If not, I'll find somewhere else. We'll just keep on, I'll keep on driving around until I find something. Because I want to stop and get a steak on. So yeah, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I think I've found our spot for the night. It's actually um, much lower down. So back down in the Lithe Valley now. That's the Lithe Valley just there. Scout Scar, where we were about three minutes ago. <laughs> is up there. In fact, I'm actually parked at the bottom where I said further along the scar, you can go up the, um, like a rake and get up to the top that way through these woods. So yeah, not bad. And very little snow, sort of sheltered, and there was no signs there saying no parking, so it should be all right. However, it is on a little bit of an angle, so it's going to be, be all right sleeping. It's just the... <laughs> The cooking is going to be interesting. Let's get in. Let's get the steak cooked up and scoffed. Maybe a little bit later on when it's fully dark, might have a little wander into the village. We'll see. Not promise anything. <laughs> Let's get some food on. Okay, welcome back into the van. Um, door's wide open. It's absolutely freezing. I'm half expecting someone to walk past there and make me jump out of my skin. I don't know what to do. I'm on a little bit of an angle, so having the door cracked open isn't really an option. It keeps flying open. Let's go find a bungee, which could be an option. Let me try that. Have it. That'll do. Got a bit of a bit of a gap. Okay, I think now we're ready. Let's make some steak. I'm not going to talk too much actually. I think I spoke way too much in that last video, so I'm just going to crack on 
and get it made and then show you it when I'm done. Flipping heck, it's freezing in here. But first, of course, <laughs> Steve Wallace, step two, Beaver Town neck oil. Uh, session IPA 4.3. Quite like a pint of this in a pub. Cheers. That's really nice, actually. Very similar to the Punk IPA. Maybe a bit fruitier. Maybe. This is the coldest night, by the way, that I've ever had in the van. So minus two will be dropping down to tonight. So it'll be a real test of the bed and the insulation and everything. All my handiwork. <laughs> Not very good handiwork. Right, tell them to do. Let's just crack on. Sweet. So the steak I've gone for today is a, a ribeye from Higginson's in Grange. Served by Mr. Higginson himself. Whoa, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Nice bit of sea salt. So I always like to put a bay leaf in the pan when I do a steak. Yeah. It's going to smell like steak and garlic in here forever. Ooh, I'm excited about this. Start the timer. <laughs> Get the red wine in. Oh yeah. I think this might take a little bit longer than usual. Definitely not a lot of heat going on here. Splash. Another wee swig. Come on. I just don't think there's enough oomph in this gas anymore. Probably because it's too cold. <laughs> I did mention about the pressure cooker, didn't I? But I think I need to test that at home first because I will blow the flipping van up. If I have not tried it before, so we'll do that at home first and do a chili and get it right for in here. I love steak night. Just a little bit worried that it's going to be a bit raw. And to go with it, I've got the pre cooked rice again. This is the Uncle Ben's, well, it's called Ben's Original now. It used to be Uncle Ben's. Proudly part of Marsh. It's a Marsh company. Uh, golden vegetable. Yeah. I'm gonna call it at that. Oh, that salt and pepper tastes so good. They can sit and they can rest together. Can't find a wooden spoon now. A few of you guys have talked about my questionable beer choices um, when I go to the pubs. I know quite often I get lager, you know, I'll go into a pub and get a pint of Moretti or whatever. But to be honest with you, my favorite beer is a really dark beer, Snake Lifter. I used to love Snake Lifter, but you can't get it in the lakes anymore. In fact, I think they've stopped making it. I think Jennings have stopped making um, Snake Lifter. I don't even know if Jennings are still going, to be honest with you. But I used to love that. But my favorite, of all beers is actually one, well actually it's a toss up between two different ones actually. There's one that's brewed in Cartmel at uh, Unsworth Yard called Last Wolf. That is delicious, really dark. And there's another one from Levens Hall called the Morocco Ale. That is amazing. And I'll, I'll get a bottle of that sometime and show you and, and taste it for you. The reason I don't drink those things often in the pub is because I don't have them. Certainly in the Lake District, I think everything's gone a bit mainstream. There's a lot of Wainwright. I don't mind Wainwright. I don't mind Lowe's Water Gold, but the rest of them, not a fan of Robinson's at all. Not a fan of Tyrell or Tyrell or what the hell they're called. I just find them a bit bland. So I like IPAs because they're fruity and they've got a bit of flavour. And I like the, like the dark ales as well. And I like stout. In fact, I was umming and ahhing about getting the, getting a bottle of, um, what is it, the Guinness West Indies Porter that is, but it's rocket fuel and I probably won't be able to talk after it. I kind of go for things that are no, right, I don't want to have Moretti, I'd rather have something else, but it's the best thing on, you know, and I know it's a safe bet. Sometimes there's other beers there that you've never heard of and you could take a punt and try it, but after a big walk, 
you don't want to be disappointed. That one pint you can have and it's awful. It's nothing more depressing. It's almost garlic time. I've also had quite a few of you ask, who the hell is Steve Wallace? I keep talking about Steve Wallace every time you crack a beer open. He's just a, a guy on YouTube, Canadian guy, and he does stealth camping type videos. Occasionally, not so much in the van, but sometimes in a car, just some weird, weird camping things in unusual places. And he's just a right nice guy, you know, and he always starts his, not starts his videos, but once he gets settled into his camp, he always cracks a beer open and he calls it the step two. So step one is set up camp, step two, crack a beer open. So it's a, it's a nod to him really. Cheers, Steve. There's actually a pub in the village. Um, what I could do, once I've eaten, we could go for a pint. What say you? Might do that, you know. A little wander through the village and get a pint. Don't you just wish there was smell of vision? <laughs> I don't know why I'm sat so far away from the pan. Let me just budge up a little bit. Hallelujah, here we go. Shove the rice in with it. Oh, oh no. Some of that heat in. I might just put a bit of this in as well. It's a bit like a risotto then, isn't it? Just a little drop. Oh, it's really cold. I can feel a really cold draft coming through here. That was a mistake. Still warm, that's good. How are you doing? Enjoying yourselves? There's going to be a lot of juice in here, I'd imagine. strips. I really do hope there's no vegetarians watching this. <laughs> if there are, I do apologise. I don't apologise for being a carnivore, but I do apologise if it is offending you. That's perfectly cooked. Right, let's try to do this without making a mess. Look at the steam. If it's not a ridiculous amount of steam in my tent, it's a ridiculous amount of steam in my van. It's a bit of an unusual dinner, I know. But steak and rice goes really well. There you go. <laughs> it does not look very appetizing at all. <laughs> it doesn't look great. Believe me when I tell you this, it tastes great. You don't want to watch me eat this because it's not going to be pretty sight. So I'll see you in a minute. Um, either walking up there or walking to the village or doing something. I don't know. We'll, we'll work it out. All right, everything's packed away. I'm going to get my shoes on and we're going to have a little wander into the village here, into Brigsteer and go to the Wheat Chief for a pint. Let's go. Oh, what a beautiful night. Probably can't see it in this camera, but there's a gazillion stars up there. Pretty cold as well. This is a bit... <laughs> that could be quite interesting coming down here later on. God, that's really, really slippy. Okay, this side's not so bad. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll have a wander through in the morning so you can see it properly, you know, in daylight. It's a really, really beautiful little village, actually. Ah, snowball. <laughs> Eek. Icy car park. taste of hellfire. <laughs> yeah, go on, have a pint of that, please. Yeah. It is, it is, mm. It's quite a nice wintry ale. It is, yeah. <sighs> Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Tom and Berry. Yeah. <laughs> Pint quaffed. Back 
to the van and just in that short time it's got really really cold temperatures drop right down i think it's about minus three now yeah, a little bit of frostage there look and this is the room for the night i don't know if you can see <laughs> right let's get in oh it smells good in here <laughs> it smells really good in here kind of like steak so today i didn't bring a cool box normally i bring a cool box on these little trips to put my beer in and you know water butter steak would go in there that kind of stuff but today i didn't bring one because i thought and i think i was right in thinking this that the whole van is going to be a cool box and by heck it really is <laughs> it's freezing in here but to be honest with you i'm I've been in bed for two minutes and I can feel the heat increasing already. So I think I think it's going to be all right. So yeah, it's been a good day. It's been a very good day. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go to, well, first of all, get a coffee on, have a wander through the village here, show you it properly, you know, by uh, by daylight. And then what we'll do is we'll head off to um, back towards Kendall. Yeah, just outside of Kendall. It's on the Crook Road. And we'll go get some breakfast there. Um, I've never been but by all accounts, it's supposed to be pretty good. So I'm excited. Anyway, I'm going to watch a film, as usual. And I shall see you in the morning. I'll see you at coffee time. Good morning. What an absolutely beautiful night. <laughs> it was so quiet again last night. I'm really lucky in these last few uh, van camps that it's been so quiet. Such a quiet area here. Not a breath of wind, like I said last night, uh, but flipping heck, very cold. It's about um, zero degrees in the van this morning when I got up. <laughs> so it's, it's really cold in the van, but in the bed, it was really toasty. So not so bad at all. Right, I think what I'm going to do is get a coffee on, but instead of sitting at the front like I did last time, pouring boiling water all over myself, I'm going to set the table up on the back and, um, and do it there. And before I get in there and make a coffee, have a look at this. Lovely, isn't it? So, yeah, after my coffee, I'll have a wander up here, back into the village, and then, yeah, have a quick shufty around. To be careful in here, I've got my Crocs on. <laughs> and it's very icy. Nice, isn't it? Right, let's get a coffee on. I'm gagging for a coffee. Okay, as promised, let's have a little walk back into the village. But I need to be really careful on this uh, this road. There's loads of black ice everywhere. It was a little bit treacherous going down last night after the pub. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's this bit here. It's a little bit, a little bit tricky. In fact, I think I stayed on the left-hand side, didn't I? Let's do that. So one thing I forgot to mention yesterday or last night was the fact that. That last video up in the Yorkshire Dales, it was demonetized by Google, by YouTube. And I suspect, and I think I was probably right, 
that it was because of a certain word that I used in that video. And it was the name of a village that I went to right at the end where there's a um, the Wensleydale Creamery, the cheese factory. Because when you say it, it sounds like something else. And that word is banned by YouTube. So I was very despondent yesterday, uh, sorry, the day before. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I was thinking, oh, oh no, all that work. You know, it's a lot of work, mate. I know it doesn't look like a lot of work, but quite a bit goes into it. I was thinking, oh, flipping heck. And I know it's not about the money, and it really isn't about the money. I had this for a long time without any adverts on, just because I love doing it. But now that I'm full time, this is my full time work. It's kind of got to pay the bills now, so I was a little bit worried. However, a human reviewed it in the end instead of a machine and um, re monetized it again. So, phew. <laughs> it's that store ball again. So, yeah, I need to be very, very careful in future when I say place names, that sort of thing. I did actually suspect at the time, I thought, oh, is this going to be a bit dodgy? And I thought when I was editing it, should I just blank out that word as I say it? But then decided, ah, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just leave it in. Now, it is winter and everything's dead. The, there's like patches of snow, it's not nice, it's dirty snow now. So the village might not look as pretty as it normally does. There's the pub. Wait, chief. I can't see a flipping thing. I've been blinded. Oh, it's so dodgy. <laughs> and it's this road here I really like. Oh, car. Which way is it going? somewhere that I've always fancied living. It's cute, isn't it? I think what I might do is try and, without slipping over, get back to the van along the low road here. That's lovely, isn't it? I love that tree there and the shadow of it. So this should bring me out right by the van. So I can avoid that slippy bit, actually. <laughs> oh, little wren flew right in front then. I don't know if you saw that. Okay. So I kind of avoided a little bit of the hill. <laughs> so the pub is just up there and the van is down here. Um, yeah, this is the dodgy bit actually, damn it. <laughs> Whoa, look at the mountains, looking very nice. Okay, back at the van. All on its tod. <laughs> and we've got a little bit of sunlight coming through the trees now. Oh, it's so beautiful this morning. It's mornings like this that just make life worth living. Well, actually, every morning, really. But <laughs> especially mornings like this. I think it's now time to go and get some breakfast. And there's a place I've got in mind. I've never been there before, uh, but by all accounts, it's pretty good. Uh, the, the trouble is, is getting there because there's a lot of black ice on the road. There might be some dodgy bits. I've got to go back over Scout Scar, past where I was yesterday, where I was parked up and then down into Kendall and back round. So I'll see how I get on. If it's not a goer, I'll choose somewhere else. I've got a second, I've actually got, I've got three ideas, but we'll go with the first one first and then we'll take it from there. Let's go and get that breakfast.
much. Wow. Okay, tell you what, I'll have one of those, please, and I'll have one of those cinnamon twists as well. Wow. Do you like a bit of Yes, please, that's great. Treat. Right, that was the first time I've ever been to Two Sisters at Plumgarth, and I will definitely be coming back because that breakfast was absolutely delicious, and the coffee as well, really good. So I had a, a Americano, and after that I had a, a flat white. And of course, you know, I can't come to Plumgarth and not go to Lovingly Artisan to get some proper treats. You saw what I got there. Wow, that little loaf is a dark chocolate and orange loaf or cake or something. I don't know what the hell it is. It's just a dark chocolate and that was it. I was sold. <laughs> anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch it. You know, I know your time's precious. And I'll see you back out on the next video really soon.